Hi, I'm Mary Chamberlain and welcome to Modern Style. As you can see, we're under construction. Right over here, they've begun to lay the foundation for a new playroom. And behind me, they're going to start digging for a new pool. As you can see, these are a couple of pretty ambitious projects and they should take a few months to finish. But when it's all done, this family will reap huge benefits. Not only will they have a home that meets their ever-changing needs, but if and when they decide to sell, these additions will only increase its value. And as mortgage rates remain low and the price of real estate continues to rise, there's never been a better time to invest in your home. With this in mind, we've picked the brains of a few industry experts and come up with 10 home improvement tips that are sure to pay off in the short run and the long run. Without further ado, tip number one. Major projects like additions cost major bucks. There's just no avoiding it. But there are companies who specialize in helping you find ways to make these projects much more affordable. After doing our homework, we discovered a couple of great programs from IndyMac Bank, the number one construction lender in the country. Their programs allow you to concentrate on your project instead of how to finance it. The first is a home remodel loan. We can do any type project, any size, whether it be structural or non-structural improvements. Give you a little difference in the two. Structural will be what you see behind me, major renovation, addition of a room. Um, non-structural will be more like um, maybe some above ground pool installation, maybe you're doing some waterproofing to the house, things of that sort. And the difference in those two is with the project that's going on behind us, we can do up to 100% of the cost plus the appraised value, which allows the homeowner to actually get the future value of his home. For instance, our homeowners here have been in their home for more than a year. Whatever the appraised value is, plus 100% of the cost, they get the combined value there, which they can utilize more monies to comp complete their project. On the other side, on the non-structural side, what you end up finding there is if a customer basically wants to do some improvements and do the waterproofing, as I mentioned, they can do that also. But let's say, take the example, the homeowner's only been in the house for less than a year. Well, we'll take 50% of whatever those costs of improvements, plus the purchase price or the lesser of, which will be the appraised value. A great feature of this program is that the customer controls the cash. He receives checks to cover the amount of the loan so the money is available right away. This helps to move the project along more quickly. IndyMac's other programs are for those who want to add on a remodel, but they don't want to deal with the hassle of more than one loan. IndyMax construction to perm loan, we could take that, roll it all into one. You could actually have one loan. It then becomes a true construction to permanent loan by giving you the funds you need to do your remodeling project allowing you to then pay off your first mortgage, if you have one, or second, combine them all into one. Now you have one loan, it's a construction to perm loan, and the great news about this program is that it becomes an interest-only loan. There's no payments during the construction or the remodeling period. Your first mortgage, second mortgage, again, if you have one, is paid off. Everything's rolled into one. We'll give you X number of months, which we have an array of months available as far as construction term. Your project may only take six months, could take 12 months. During that period of time, interest only, no payments. When the construction is complete, the great news is your loan will automatically roll over into a permanent loan. No additional costs, no additional fees. One-time closing, which offers you a great benefit as a homeowner to get the work done that you want, get your home repaired, remodeled, do those additions you want to do, not have to make any payments, and eventually roll into a loan that you don't have to go through another closing. The other nice thing about loans from IndyMac Bank is their range. You can borrow as little as $10,000. So really, there's no need to hold off on those home improvement projects any longer. <laughs> Except maybe the mess. It helps move a remodel project along if you've developed a concept before you get too deeply involved. Once you've developed that concept, the trick is converting it into a form that's beneficial. designers at Armstrong have taken great strides to help homeowners visualize what the completed space will look like before purchasing any of the products you will need to do the work. This is their Design My Room CD. It's an invaluable tool for do-it-yourselfers and I'm happy to report operating it is child's play. Use pictures of your home to see what new Armstrong products will look like installed. You can either take a digital picture of your space and download it into the program or use one of their sample rooms. Next. 
Or if you want a friend's opinion, simply email it. You can find the software at www.armstrong.com. Real estate agents will tell you that prospective home buyers often head right for the kitchen. So you're likely to get an excellent return on the money you invest in that room. New countertops are obviously an integral part of any kitchen remodel, so that funky old tile has got to go. In this kitchen, we've installed a beautiful countertop from Vermont Soapstone. A, a good architectural soapstone is about 60% talc, and the remaining is impure minerals, generally iron pyrite and quartz. It's a non-porous, naturally occurring substance that is soft to the touch but extremely dense. And by dense, I mean heavy. Soapstone counters are becoming increasingly popular, partially because they're so attractive, but also because they're versatile. They happen to be one of the few countertops that non-professionals can install with just a little direction. All right, so the first thing we did, uh, once we set the stone on the sink to get that lined up, we went back and leveled everything up to make sure it was uh, flush and that the seams would come together smooth. Uh, from that point, we tipped the top back up put some silicone on top of the sink to set the top back down on that so we won't get any water washing back in the cabinet. And now we're gonna move on to getting these seams together so nothing to get down in there and get a nice flush seam. It's important before applying glue to run a piece of tape along either side of the seam and over the edge. This is going to prevent you from getting adhesive on the counter. I'm also going to put a piece of tape uh, down the front of this cabinet a little bit so if any glue slips down the front of that, we're not on the cabinet. So one more thing we're going to do before we take that apart to glue, we're just going to put the square on it one more time and make sure that the corner is square, which it is here. We, we did a real good job of squaring that up. Before applying the epoxy, pull the two pieces of stone about a half an inch apart. This will leave a small gap to spread the glue. I mentioned versatility before. Well, unlike most other counters, scratches and nicks can be easily sanded down with something as simple as this. Even the glue we use to seal the seams can be easily rubbed out. Sandpaper is also used to give the stone an eased edge. A rounded edge is preferred because sharp corners are more likely to chip. But how do you get from a silvery gray slab covered with powder to a beautiful charcoal masterpiece you see here? It's easy, water and oil. And the nice thing is once we finish oiling, we'll dry it off and tonight they'll be using the countertop. One final tip. After you're done oiling the counter, save a rag in a baggie and put it under the sink. That way you always have one handy when you need to shine her up. By the way, Vermont Soapstone also makes sinks and fireplaces. For more information about their products, go to www.vermontsoapstone.com. After you've spent some time getting to know the Design My Room software, put it to good use. We used it to brighten up the appearance of this kitchen with ceiling tiles and to help create a warm and inviting environment in this house with engineered wood floors. Ceiling tiles can make a kitchen look so elegant, so we decided to kick this room up with 12-inch tiles from Armstrong. They're made of 55% recyclable material. And after viewing several different style options, we went with the Kensington design. The application is pretty straightforward. Okay, once you've taken the measurements of your room and calculated the size, you can start installing your track. Once the track is installed, add your clips, take your ceiling tiles, place it up into the ceiling, slide your clips into place, Keep going that way. And slide some more clips. We finished the ceiling with crown molding. Now these tiles haven't been painted